Now we will dive into telling an effective data story through a compelling narrative. To do this, first we need to understand the context. And these are some of the questions that you may want to ask yourself when understanding the context of what we are doing. First, who are the audience? What are their biases? What keeps them motivated? It is important to know who will possibly see your data story. That way, you can somehow tailor fit the insights in a manner that will benefit them more. Next, what is a successful outcome? Do you intend to influence your audience to act upon something? Or are you just exploring the data and informing them? You have to be clear on what you need to achieve from this. This can also be a good reference when you will do it again in the future. Lastly, where did the data come from? Oftentimes, data would come from various sources. It may be from a system or a database where you extracted or downloaded the data. Or it can be from a colleague or a client, or maybe you collected the data yourself. There will be times when your audience would ask about this, and it is important that you know your data source and how credible it is, because this will help you establish the reliability of your data story and your credibility as an analyst as well. Second point in building a good narrative, choose appropriate visuals and eliminate clutters. In the previous lessons, we have learned how to choose visuals depending on the data, right? So ask yourself, are all elements necessary? Well, if not, we may remove unnecessary elements. Afterwards, check if the cleaner version is still conveying the message that you want to send across. Let us look at this example. So from the original chart, the grid lines were removed and the month was shortened to three characters and straightened horizontally to make it more readable. Actually, these two steps alone made the chart a lot clutter-free. It is usual to remove grid lines, especially if it did not guide us to the important axis. We can also refer to the Gestalt principles of visual perception in fixing our visuals. This came from the theories of visual perception, and it attempts to describe how people organize visual elements into groups when certain principles are applied. First principle is the principle of proximity. This tells us that our brain tends to group things together when they are closer to each other. Here we see that this whole block of dots on the left is perceived as one whole group because dots have equal spaces in between, while this one on the right is perceived as three groups because there are wider spaces between the second and third column of dots and between the fourth and fifth columns. Our brain tells us that these wider spaces are dividers, dividing the block into three, while those closer to each other belong to one group. Now, going back to our chart, the original chart, and if we apply the principle of proximity here, we can move the legends closer to the chart itself so that it will be easy to identify which is for which. It will save time to consume this chart if the labels are closer to the actual lines or bars. Next principle is the principle of similarity. Our brain tends to group things together when they are similar to each other. Now, looking at our example, we are grouping the first object in rows because rows have the same colors, while the one in the middle is grouped vertically because of the similarity of colors as well. In the rightmost figure, group this vertically because those elements lined up vertically have the same shapes. Now that's how the principle of similarity works. Applying this to our chart, we can change the color of the labels to the same color of the lines so we can easily identify them as similar that they belong to one group. Next, we have the principle of enclosure. Now this means that we tend to group things together when they are enclosed in a space. For example, here, without the green box, this can be perceived as just one block of dots. But when we enclose the second row with the green box, the second row is seen as one group now. Applying this principle to our chart, Boxing the April data, our attention will be drawn easily to the boxed information. And adding some insights there, it will lead your audience to where you want them to focus on. Next one is the principle of continuity. If you will look at the left chart, you may see this as random categories just presented as is. It is actually hard to draw insights here. 
while on the right side, data is arranged in a continuous manner, and our attention will follow this continuous line that it produces. It is easier to picture the situation this way. It is also advisable to sort your data accordingly, let's say in ascending or descending manner. Although when there are date and time component, the sorting of data should ideally be chronological. This is how the principle of continuity works. Third tip in creating a compelling narrative is to always try to draw attention to what you want your audience to focus on. Usually in a data story, you would want your audience to focus on one important thing. Well, be intentional with the use of colors. For example, in industry practice, red is used as a negative indicator, like for decrease or decline. On the other hand, green is used to indicate positive movement. If your company or client has color branding, use the color contrast smartly without violating branding rules. Well, this is an example of using colors to highlight insights on the chart, which looks so different from the original one. Usually, all other things are grayed out, and the only colored ones are those parts of the insights. This will lead your audience attention to the important things. If you want your audience to focus on the wrong items issue, you will gray out everything else and make the line for wrong item issue shine. First thing that the audience would notice will be the colored line. While on the other hand, the one on the right, all lines are grayed out and the month of April is enclosed in a red space. Maybe here April is the peak of operations and it has to be highlighted. Or maybe it has the highest issues across all months and they have to focus on this. So this is how we use colors in our charts. Make your insights visible. Fourth tip, think like a designer. After visuals, there should be insights. So these are some of the questions that you may want to ask yourself. Are my insights clear? Did I use simple words? Do not complicate your insights. As much as possible, try to write it in a manner that can be easily understood by people with various technical expertise. These are some of the best practices in generating insights. Number one, describe trends, outstanding features in the charts, can be your essential statistics or some outliers. You can put callouts within the charts to emphasize the points that you are highlighting. Next, include a time reference if applicable. When you have a time component in the data, you may also check if you can draw something out of the time points. Let's say in June 2022 or in the first quarter of 2021, then you will tell something about what happened there. Number three, look at the bigger context. If for example, you know some relevant external information which may not be featured in your data and will help in the context of the results, then you may add those. It can make your insights a lot stronger. Going back to the example earlier, here we know that the attendance for April was relatively low, so we can add that as insights. People can picture that, okay, reasons why we have many issues is because attendance was down by this much. So yeah, be resourceful in picking other useful information. Next, it is important to understand what is the impact of your analysis. Try to know whether your results are good news or bad news because this can entirely change your narrative. So you can also change the scripting of your insights. For example, you can make it sound more neutral or more convincing. Or you can manage the order of your results. Say you will put the good news first, bad news will come later, and then tell them what they need to do. This will also boil down to understanding the audience. Number five, Choose simple words. Again, do not complicate your insights as much as possible. And last but not the least, if there are actions needed to be done based on the results, highlight your recommendations. It is important to tell them what do they need to do moving forward. This is something that they can take away from these results. Okay, so to sum it up, a good data story, aside from data and visuals, it must have a compelling narrative. The things to remember when building your narrative, number one, understand the context. Two, choose appropriate visuals and eliminate clutters. Three, draw attention to what you want your audience to focus on. And number four, think like a designer.
That's about it. I hope you will be able to apply these in your data story exercises.